Today it's going to be a short episode of Fight and Revive as we're going to be discussing a topic that's been on my mind recently, which is should Virginia become a split vote state? We'll explain what that is and if it should happen coming up next on Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. As I said, today is going to be a shorter episode. I'm filming this kind of last minute. I've got to get this uploaded tomorrow, and it's late at night now, so I'm going to get this done. But basically, uh, we're going to start by reading from this article from 270 to win, explaining what a split electoral vote state is. And the only two states in the U.S. that doesn't just have a winner-take-all electoral vote system are Maine and Nebraska, so let's read this. In all but two states, electoral votes are winner-take-all. The candidate winning the popular vote normally receives all of that state's votes. Maine and Nebraska have a different approach. Using the congressional district method, these states allocate two electoral votes to the state popular vote winner and then one electoral vote to the popular vote winner in each congressional district, two in Maine, three in Nebraska. This creates multiple popular vote contests in these states, which could lead to a split electoral vote. Maine enacted this rule in advance of 1972 election, Nebraska 1992. Uh, the first split happened in 2008. Maine had his first split in 2016 when Trump won Maine's 2nd District, which covers most of the state away from Portland, Augusta, and nearby coastal areas. Statewide, Maine last voted Republican in 1988. In 2020, District 2 in each state was won by the candidate of the statewide popular vote loser. While, this, while the first time this has happened, the two votes also effectively canceled each other out. So, basically, you hear it there. Uh, those are the two states. That's how it works. Now, why do I want to this to happen in Virginia. We're going to pull up the Virginia electoral map here. And basically, the reason I want that is because Virginia has been a red state for a long time, or had been up until the mid-2000s, until 2008 with Barack Obama's election. Virginia was a very uh, red state. And if you look at it by location now, it continues to be a very red state. There are roughly 20-ish counties in Virginia. I'll say 20, or maybe 25 counties and cities that vote blue, but they alone pretty much control the state. Now, that is due in large part to the shift in population in Virginia. It keeps growing, and that's because of the northern Virginia, the D.C. suburbs. A lot of federal employees, and there's about 3 million of them by best estimates, federal employees moving to northern Virginia and voting Democrat because that's what they do. So they move to northern Virginia and mess up Virginia's voting, basically. Virginia is a winner-take-all states like the 48 other states other than Maine and Nebraska. So Virginia has 11 electoral votes. And they usually all go Democrat. So the problem with that being, excuse me, I said 11, 13 electoral votes, 11 congressional districts. So basically the question is, why should Virginia become a split vote state? And I want Virginia to become a split vote state because that way the rest of the state, other than Nova and like the southeastern part of the state, will get some say in the elections. Because the southwest part of Virginia, for example, the central part of Virginia, even the kind of northwest part, if you look at it just right, uh, even that is very red. There's even some stuff on the eastern part of the state that's not kind of uh, stuck together in the northern or southern part. It's kind of on the eastern seaboard, which is somewhat uh, red. And yet, because of Nova, all of these states, they get to be uh, excuse me, all of these counties pretty much get to control Virginia's elections. But if we split it up by electoral vote, it'd be much more even and representative of the Virginia public. So there are 11 electoral votes, basically, in that scenario because, or 11 electoral votes for congressional district, because there's 11 congressional districts in the state. Virginia has 13 electoral votes, two would go to the state, winner as a whole, because we have two senators just like all the other states. Uh, to Democrat senators, might I add, because of the same reason, uh, Virginia is turning blue. But we have 11 congressional districts, and currently six are controlled by Democrats, five are controlled by Republicans. Typically, you have four uh, Republican uh, Republican districts, and you have four uh, uh, five Democrat districts. So the two that are swing districts are Virginia's 7th congressional district, which is currently... Um, represented by incumbent uh, U.S. Representative Abigail Spanberger, who is running for Virginia governor in 2025, and in my opinion, prematurely anyway, is likely to win, which is unfortunate because she's a radical far-left Democrat. Likes to pretend she's a moderate, but she's a radical. 
Uh, and then Virginia's second district, which is currently held by Jen Kiggins, who is, unfortunately, while being a Republican, she did win, I think, in 2022, or was it 2020? She won recently, and she is a Republican, but unfortunately, she is a rhino, is not very good at all, has a bad score by, uh, in the conservative scores, like Heritage Action for America gives her a very bad score. So, typically, we ha you have five, uh, re five reliably uh, Democrat districts and five or four reliably Republican districts, and the second and the seventh are the two that are the swing districts. So that means if, say, 2024, if this happened, you know, later, I mean, it can't happen this year, let's say 2028, by then, Virginia has become a split vote state, and let's say the seventh and the second vote for Republican, which is certainly possible for president, well, then Virginia ends up having six electoral votes going to Republicans and seven going to Democrats, because five congressional districts, two uh, for the statewide as a whole, and, uh, statewide popular vote as a whole, and that's seven electoral votes that go to the Democrat and six electoral votes that go to the Republican. And that way, the parts of Virginia that aren't just flaming liberal and are actually large swaths, actually the majority of Virginia by landmass, and now they actually get some say in the presidential election because right now they really do not very much at all. And of course, like I said, you could say this for just about any other state, it's not that this is unique to Virginia or anything. It's, you know, it could be said for any deep Republican state, like maybe they should do it in Wyoming or they should do it in a Democrat state like New Jersey or whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter. The point being, I live in Virginia. It's where, so it's where I care about the most. Honestly, I love this idea. It makes things more representative. Um, I don't know that I want to see it implemented nationwide per se, certainly not by a federal, um, the federal edict, since the federal government doesn't have control over those elections like that, the states pretty much get to decide how they want to run their elections. But if each state individually wanted to impose this, basically, and make this their new law, I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. Like I said, in the southwestern part of Virginia, in the central part of Virginia mostly, which is where I live, um, it really give us some say. And obviously, you know, if this was vice versa, I would say, no, I don't want this. Obviously, you know, I don't want the Democrats controlling uh, you know, having a say when Republicans control the state. So, you know, if it's in South Dakota, you know, I don't want to implement it, basically. But you know how it is. Basically, you know, it's political partisanship. So what? You know, the states get to decide. I'm going to do what I think is most beneficial for uh, myself and, you know, the people around me and my country. And that's what I'm going to advocate for. But with that said, like I said, it's a short video today. Uh, I will say real quick, Nebraska did just try to change back to uh, from their split vote system to just popular vote, a winner take all, because the second con congressional district, Nebraska, which is the only one that is somewhat Democrat, it's kind of a purple district, went to Biden in 2020 and could again in 2024, and in an election that is expected to be very tight, that could end up hurting Trump or Biden, depending on which way it goes. That effort did fail by I think 36 to eight. So, you no. Know, with that said. Uh, you know, Nebraska's not changing. Maine, there was no attempt to change, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, these kind of efforts in the future and the presidential election. And speaking of which, if you want to go watch the video I did, my latest presidential election map, which is new and up to date, you can check it out at the end card at the end of the video. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.